God is good. Let's so stand for the reading of the Word of God. The, the Word of God comes from Luke chapter 9, verse 37 to 45. I'm reading from ESV. You can follow along in your own Bible or you can follow along with the uh, words on the screen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. And behold, a man from the crowd cried out, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son, for he is my only child. And behold, a spirit seizes him, and he suddenly cries out. He converses him so that he foams at the mouth and shatters him, will hardly leave him. And I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, Oh, faithless and twisted generation, how long am I to be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon threw him to the ground and conversed him. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his father. And all were astonished at the majesty of God. While they were all marveling at everything he was doing, Jesus said to his disciples, Let these words sink into your ears. The Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men. But they did not understand this saying, and it was concealed from them, so that they might not perceive it. And they were afraid to ask him about this saying. This is, ends the reading of the word. All God's people say, thanks be to God. You may be seated. It is a veritable word of God. Receive them as such, as from the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this afternoon. We worship you. We look unto you, God. Behold your majesty. We honor you. We give you glory. We worship you through songs of praise and thanksgiving. We worship you through our offerings of giving God. We worship you as we come and hear your word. You will be in our midst, Father. We ask more than good teaching. We ask for your nearness. We ask you will be with us even now. Show us your face. Show us your glory. We love you, God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We are in the Gospel of Luke. I'll be about 26th message this year on Luke. Probably we are about one third of the way in the Gospel of Luke many years ago. And I, I think that Christ will come maybe before we are done with Luke. Maybe. Maybe, okay? How one day could change everything. It says in verse uh, 37, on the next day. The day before this, Jesus was in the mountain with three of the disciples, Peter, John, and James. And there they saw the glory of God. You know, while Jesus was praying, disciples were pray, sleeping, while he was praying, he was transformed and changed. Not only that, Moses and Elijah appeared in glory, begin to talk to Jesus as talking. And when Peter and and John and James woke up, saw that glory. They didn't know what to say. And when they were leaving, you know, remember how Peter said, let's make three tents. Why don't you stay here in the mountain longer? He didn't know what he was talking about. And, and, and after all that, and the clouds, gl 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 glory clouds showed up and covered them. And there's a voice from heaven came. And this is my beloved son, chosen one. Listen to him. And Peter and John and James beheld God's glory to some degree. God's glory of God in Jesus was revealed for a little bit. And you know, you remember that that in the mountain, what was Peter, what was uh, Elijah and Moses speaking to Jesus, Jesus about? How he'll go to Jerusalem and die. And, and how he will depart from Jerusalem and bringing salvation for the peoples. 
That was what the Mount of Transfiguration was. Very next day, as Jesus was coming down, they came, they came down to a pandemonium. They came down to confusion. The people were all gathered. He said, you know, and actually, you know, this same story is told in Mark and Gospel, Mark and Gospel, Matthew. In there, they said they were arguing. There were not only a lot of people gathered, but the scribes were there arguing with disciples. Something happened there. And apparently, disciples failed. They, and they failed. And, and because what was, what was happening there, and in, in Mark chapter 9, it says, when they came down back to the disciples, they saw a large crowd. Remember, nine of the disciples were on the bottom of the mountain. Only three went up. When they came back, the nine of the disciples were surrounded by the people, and now there were arguing, argument going on. Some scribes were arguing with them. And he, Jesus asked them, what are you arguing about with them? A lot of talking, a lot of discussions, a lot of chaos going on right here. Then suddenly a man comes out and says, Please look at my son, my only child. A desperate situation was there. There was a man, he has only son. His son was severely demonized. Severely demonized. He said, you know, I begged you to look at my son. And, in, and he talks about how he is my only child. Behold, a spirit seizes him. Suddenly cries out. You know, and it converses. It almost sounds like seizure, epileptic seizure happening right here. And as I brought my son to your disciples, I begged them, told them to cast it out, and they could not do it. Look at my severely, um, severely demonized. If you look at three Gospels together, if you piece together, this is what you see. The spirit, the spirit seizes the boy. A child screams, throws him down to the ground. He begins to convulse, and he foams in his mouth. His teeth, is, he is grinding his teeth. His body becomes stiff. And, and then sometimes, it, and this spirit throws a boy into the fire, into the water, trying to destroy him. He's filled with scars. Not only that, the boy is mute and deaf because of the spirit. Now he, probably that means that he's, sometimes he's normal, but when the spirit seizes him, he is deaf and mute. This is a boy. If this, father, if this father brought his desperate son to the disciples, and they, and they brought him in a penalty. His disciples couldn't help. Some people say this sounds like epileptic seizures. Remember, Luke was a doctor. The one who wrote the gospel, Luke was a doctor. She knew the difference between epileptic seizures or the one caused by the demons here. She knew the difference. This was not, this is not epileptic seizure. It is something really going on here. And apparently this disciple tried to cure this boy, cast the demon out. It didn't work. Now I want you to see what Jesus says in verse 30, 41. Oh, faithless and twisted, perverted generation, how long am I to be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. If Jesus was ever annoyed, this is one of those places. You find Jesus was annoyed here. You know, Jesus can get annoyed. He got annoyed. It was not seen to be annoyed. He was annoyed here. Why? Because of the lack of faith. And the, of this perverted generation, it says, who is he referring to? A crowd? The scribes that their disciples are arguing it? Or is it the disciples? I think all are included, but especially the disciples. I think especially the disciples. Faithlessness, lack of faith in the disciples. You know, interestingly, you know, that, let me make a note here that, you know, I don't know, you may not notice. Same story is told in three Gospels, Ma Ma Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In Luke's Gospel, somehow, and now Luke usually are longer than any other Gospel story, so he has longer description, but this one, he cuts out a lot of things that Mark and the Matthew mentioned. He, 
cut some out. And I'm going to piece some of those things together. And, and I want to let you know that the, you have to understand why, why it looks, it took some of the details out. I need, I'll explain it a little later. Okay. So the reason I'm telling you is because it's not, it's, it's not in the Gospel of Luke. I, I'm piecing it together from the Gospel of Mark and Gospel of Matthew as well. The question here is, my well, first question here is that, you know, uh, big question is, why couldn't they do it? That's a question that Matthew and Gospel Mark mentions where the Luke doesn't. Right? Now, and now when, when the boy is being brought, it says in verse 42, the demon threw him down and began to converse him. And so now in other Gospel in Mark, Jesus began to talk to the talk to the father. How long has it been like this? How long has it been? The father said for me when he was a child, little child. And then begin to ask, and, and big father begin to tell him what happened. Now, let me, let me think about this. Why do you think Jesus is talking to the father about this? Why would he be talking? Because he needs more information? He's, is he tr trying to stall? Is he trying to get more time? Why, why do you think he's talking to the father? Could it be that it's for the sake of the father? sake of the help the father to do something right look at what it says right in verse uh, mark chapter 9 verse 21 and he asked the father how long has this been happening to him he said from child from his little it has been it has often thrown, thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him think about the father seeing his son thrown into fire and the water and almost to destroy him and he had to rescue him but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. But I want you to look at that line. If you can do anything. In the midst of all the conversation with Jesus, he says, if you can do anything, what do you hear him saying? I don't know if you can do anything. Please do something. He, has, he doesn't have faith. He doesn't have faith that Jesus can do anything. If disciples failed, can you, if you can do something, can, if you can do anything, this is what Jesus was talking to him about, helping, to, helping him to have faith, to trust in Jesus. He said, if you can, what are you talking about if you can? What do you mean if you can? Jesus responds by saying, if you can, all things are possible to those who believe. All things are possible to those who believe. Look at what Father says. Immediately the boy's father cried out saying, I do believe. Look at the next line. Help my unbelief. Sounds funny, right? I do believe. But help me, I cannot believe. I don't, I don't know how to believe yet. Help me. Because you see, you see the father saying, yes. Jesus said, anything is possible to those who believe. I do want to believe. Help me to believe. Help me. Because of my unbelief, I doubt. I heard, I heard about this story a long time ago. The biggest church in the world used to be, I think still is, the uh, full gospel church in Korea, in uh, Yeoido, where Dr. Yonggi Cho was a pastor. This church is known for a lot of healings or not. Apparently, Wednesday night, said, Wednesday night service, they have a, you know, test, people give a common testimony. A young man came out and gave testimony, saying that I was sick and I got healed. He gave a testimony saying, at the end, he began to cry. I do want to be healed. He, actually, he wasn't healed. But he, was, he thought if he gave testimony that I got healed, that God will heal him. He began to weep. God, God help me to be healed. He gave testimony saying, God healed me. Yet, I'm, he's not healed yet. So anyway, so that, I remember this, the story about how we said, I want to believe. I, I do want to believe. But help my unbelief. I, I, want you to listen. I want you to look at the story here. Jesus is talking to the father to help him. And he, didn't have to, he can just have healed the boy, but he take time to talk with the father. Help him. It's not because he needs his faith to be healed, but Jesus talking with the father. Remember, remember the woman who came? If I just touch his cloak, I'll be healed. 
She had faith when she came. If I just touch him, I'll be healed. And she got she was healed. And so Jesus helping this, this man, Father, I do believe, help my unbelief in message trends. I think message trends are said this way. No sooner were the words out of his mouth than the father cried. Then I believe. Help me with my doubts. I have, I have doubt. Help me. I want to believe. Help me. I do have a lot of doubts. Now I want you to see what Jesus does right here. You look at the next verse. Literally he says, literally when he was coming, but he, and as he comes, Jesus rebukes the unclean spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his the father. Talking with the father, and then after he says all that, Jesus rebukes the spirit. In Mark chapter 9, he says, saying to it, you mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him. Never enter him again. He rebuked, while that, he just rebuked the spirit and healed the boy and sets him free. He was not trying to get him to say, I believe. He was helping him to trust in him. And Jesus showed his grace and mercy. And then look at what it says in Mark chapter 9. And after crying out, conversing him terribly, he came out. That thing came out. And boy was like a dog corpse. And he fell down. And he was corpse like a corpse. So that many people said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, gave him to the son, the father. Healed the boy. Made him completely well whole and gave him back to the father. Now, look at the whole crowd now. They saw what disciples, other disciples couldn't do. Now, Jesus commands and demons goes out. And people now look at what, look at what happened right here. In verse 42, is, all were astonished, amazed, and at the majesty of God, at the glory of God. This happens all the time. When Jesus does miracles, people are amazed and give glory to God. Remember just a day, one day ago, one, a day before, disciples on the mountain saw the glory of God, majesty of God revealed when Jesus was transfigured. Now, in the bottom of the mountain, people saw the glory of God when Jesus showed his mercy and how he, when he healed that young man, they saw God's glory. In the mountain, they saw God's glory when he was transfigured. Here they see God's glory when, when Jesus heals a young man. They see God's glory both in the mountain top and the bottom of the mountain. Either way, they see the glory of God. A big question that this gospel looked as not really asked, but other gospels ask is, why couldn't we cast it out? This is what the other nine disciples are thinking about. Remember, right? Remember not too long ago, in the beginning of the chapter 9 of the Gospel of Luke, Jesus called the 12 disciples and gave them authority and power over all demons to, to cure diseases. He sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. And they did go out. They did go out and heal the sick and cast demons out. They were able to, they did it before. They were able to do it before. Now what happened? Why couldn't they do it right now? You know, why couldn't they do it? They did it before. Why not now? This is what other gospels, Mark, Matthew and Mark, answers. Just in a few days, they failed. They became powerless, ineffective. They asked Jesus in Mark chapter 9, and, and when he had entered the house, the disciples asked him privately on the side, why could he not cast it out? He said to them, this kind does not, cannot be driven out by anything but prayer and fasting. Something went on here. Something went on here. In the Matthew's account, and then here Jesus asked more here. And he, and he said, because of your littleness of faith. Truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, it will move. 
and nothing will be impossible for you because your littleness of your faith. This is what happened. Unbelief, faithlessness was a cause. You see, before, before they, and they tried, they tried the best. Before they healed the sick, something, what happened now is, you know what, and, and, and at this time they were tried and they did their best using all the formulas that, you know, we they did this before this happened. If, if we do one, two, and three, demon will go out. Before they believed and trusted in the power of God, in God's power, now they're trusting in their methods. They, we have done this before, we could do it again. Meaning they were trusting in their own strength. Their own strength. Before I, We did it before. Sure, bring the boy, we can do it. We did it before. How did he do it? Oh, laid hand, commanded, get out, whatever. We did what we did before, one to three, and I should go out. He didn't go out. This happens often. We come because we, when, when, when things happen first time, God, we trust in you. We come and ask God, and, and we, by trusting in God, we, we see God working in us. After a while, I've done this before. I've done this. I don't have to pray about it. I, I, I know how to do this. I can do it now. And, you know, and, you know, and, and you act as if you have the power. Power was never in you. It was always God's authority, God's power. Now they're saying, I'm, I'm trusting in my, my strategies, my process. I'm believing in my, my ability, what I could do. We move from trusting in God to trusting in the process or trusting in myself. You see, prayer and faith, true prayer is an act of faith. True prayer is an act of faith. Vital, by vital authentic faith, believing, exists only in a life of perpetual, continued dependence of God. You see, true faith is really dependence of God. It's really, you know, it really comes along with prayer, trusting in God. Here she tells you, tell Jesus says, without prayer, this will not go out. You trusting in God, it will not go out. It is not what you do, it is about God being with you. You trusting in God, God's grace. Have we become comfortable with our own ways? Listen, He hasn't changed. We have become comfortable in things. Now, the Gospel of Luke doesn't mention these things at all, He focuses on something else. He says, ponder these things. Yes. Healing of the boy, glory of God, majesty of God is revealed. Great. What was in Jesus' mind? Look at verse, look at verse uh, 44 and 40, 43, 44, 45. But while they were all marveling at everything he was doing, Jesus said to his disciples, let these words sink in your ears. The Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men. What was in the heart of Jesus? He was thinking about the cross he will bear. What he came to do, to die on the cross, to shed his blood for the forgiveness of sins, for the salvation of the souls, which is basis on which everything else should happen. But they did not understand, Bible says, and was concealed from them. And that they might not perceive it, and they were afraid to ask him about this thing, saying, What was in the mind of Jesus? Yes, healing was important. He came to heal, but he didn't come to heal only. He came to save us from all the sins and save us from the penalty of sin, save us from the devastation we're in this world. He who came to die on the cross, shed his blood to set us free. Oh, by his stress, we are healed. By his suffering, that we are made right. He came to go to cross. Cross was on his mind. Cross was on his mind. This, was, this is why in the later verse in Luke chapter 9, 51, it says, When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. He said his mind, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. This is what I came to do, to die on the cross. He said his mind to go to Jerusalem. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. So whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Our God, our Lord Jesus, came to say and heal us, restore us. Our glory, our God. I'm going to praise him, come. I'm grateful that we celebrate, remember uh, the death and suffering of our Lord Jesus by uh, uh, celebrating communion first Sunday of each month. Yes, all our Lord Jesus Christ does for us, what he has done for us, amazing healing and restoration, miracles, does great for us. And we love all these things. And most of all, we are grateful for what he came to do on the cross. Shed his blood and pay the penalty of our sins. Cleanse us. Give us life of abundance. That's our God. What a great name. What an amazing name that we have in Jesus Christ. Let me pray a little bit. Father, we come. We look to you, we honor you, we give you glory, God, our God and our King. Your God who looks at us, our brokenness. Lord, you came and healed that, little, that young man who was bound by demons for so long. Showed your grace and mercy. And Lord Jesus, you were reminded what you came to do to die on the cross to shed your blood for our sake. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We trust in you, God. We love you, God. Come, our King. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen.